Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'll finish these T accounts, and then we're also going to talk about what happens with manufacturing overhead at year end, under applied and over applied overhead, and then the journal entries to dispose of under applied and or over applied overhead. Okay. So where we left off is we said we had our two thousand dollar beginning balance and work in process plus our direct materials, our direct labor, plus our overhead applied. So then what we could say is our beginning whip plus our additional manufactured costs minus our ending whip gives us our cost because manufactured. The way we did it a little, we did it slightly differently here where we were told that these two jobs were completed and we looked at the cost of job 101 and the cost of job 102. Those two together are $32,000. So then we could add these and subtract the 32 to give us the $11,000 balance in job 103, okay? Which is our work and process ending. Then with our finished goods, we have our beginning zero balance in finished goods plus our $32,000 cost goods manufactured. We are told that job 101 was sold on account during January and we looked at the journal entry for that and we know that the total cost of job 101 is 15,000 so that's our credit to finished goods and then our debit to cost of goods sold right over there 32 minus the 15 gives us the 17 that's 17,000 is job 102 and this is job 101 job 101 is the only one that was sold if we look back at our journal entry on the prior page, we would see we credited wages payable for $21,000. Now let's look at manufacturing overhead. Remember we had $1,000 of indirect materials, IM indirect materials. We had $3,000 of indirect labor, IL indirect labor. Then we had $8,000 of other overhead costs. And that's just rolling it from the prior page. Those journal entries that we are looking at on the prior page right there. Then what we did is we applied overhead of $9,000. So we credited overhead and we debited WIP. So I'll put that credit of $9,000 right there. And then that means when we add these and subtract the 9,000, we have $3,000 of manufacturing overhead left at the end of the year okay or left over and let's just assume it's the end of the year this is three thousand dollars manufacturing overhead left over okay so what i want to do now is i want to talk more about this three thousand dollars why does it exist what is it and what do we need to do about it okay so we look over here Remember, I'm just going to recreate that T account right over here. We had that $1,000 of indirect materials, $3,000 of indirect labor, and we had $8,000 of other. We had our $9,000 applied. That means we have $3,000 sitting right there. Okay, so what's going on here? This is applied. This is actual. So this is our actual overhead that we are that we are incurring. So we have to pay out $1,000 of production supervisor's salary. We had $3,000 of indirect labor, $8,000 of other. This is based upon applied. And remember, applied is equal to our rate times the amount of allocation base used. And our rate is based upon our estimated overhead divided by our estimated base. So if you think about what's going on is we use our estimated overhead divided by our estimated base. This is the same thing as saying budgeted overhead divided by our budgeted base. So this rate is based upon a budget. It's based upon a budget. And then we take that times the amount of actual allocation base used. So then this number, which is the applied overhead, is based upon eventually it's based upon 
this this rate because the rate comes into factor it comes into um, calculating this number right over here factors into calculating this number and the rate is based upon an estimate so this number part part of the calculation of this number is based upon an estimate okay so this is actual this is based upon an estimate what we have over here is that sometimes our actual overhead is different than how much we thought we would have okay and that's what's happening right over here with manufacturing overhead so we have a difference between how much we actually had and how much we estimated that we would have which would be the same thing as saying let's say you live off campus and you budgeted to pay fifty dollars in utilities but it ended up that you use more electricity during the month and you ended up paying sixty dollars in elect in utilities your actual is more than your budget and that's all that we have here and again why do we use estimated overhead estimated base for pricing and for budgeting reasons that's why we do that so we have a discrepancy right over here due to the difference between actual and then applied and applied is based upon budget okay so we have to do something with this three thousand dollars okay so we have two terms right over here, under applied versus over applied. And we need to do something this $3,000. The first thing is we have to designate it as under applied or over applied overhead. And then we need to do a journal entry to zero out, close out the manufacturing overhead at the end of the accounting period. Okay. So under applied overhead. Let's look at the definition exists when the amount of overhead applied to jobs during during the period, the amount of overhead applied to the jobs during the period using our predetermined overhead rate is less than the actual overhead incurred. Over applied would be when the amount of applied overhead, which is based upon our predetermined overhead rate, is greater than the actual overhead. So if you think about it, actual is greater than applied or applied is less than actual. That means this is under applied. If this had been 15,000, right, if this had been 15,000 applied and we had $3,000 over here, then it would be over. So if you think about this, a debit balance left over in manufacturing overhead is under applied. A credit balance left over in manufacturing overhead at year end is over applied. There are two ways that we can dispose of this manufacturing overhead, which is something that we need to do at year end. We need to close out manufacturing overhead. We have to give it a zero balance so it can start collecting overhead for the next accounting period, just like what we did in our closing journal entries back in accounting 101 we had to zero out our revenue and expense accounts close them out so that they could start collecting revenues and expenses for the next accounting period okay and there's two ways that we can do this the first way is we can close to cost of goods sold the second way is prorate or allocate whatever word you want to use among work in process finished goods and cost of goods sold those are the two ways so let's look at the journal entry if we close it out to cost of goods sold and before we do that our decision rule would be that if the balance in manufacturing overhead is immaterial which means it's not a big dollar amount and that it does not affect anyone's assessment of the financial statement, we can close it out to cost of goods sold. If it's material and it would, which means it's a bigger dollar amount and it would affect someone's assessment of the financial statements, then we need to allocate it or prorate it. Okay. So, Let's look at our journal entry over here. What is our journal entry if we close it out to cost of goods sold? Well, if we look back at the T account, I have to get I have to make manufacturing overhead a zero balance. 
Okay. And how do I do that? If I put a three thousand dollars there, now this is twelve. This is twelve. Twelve minus twelve is zero. So I I know I'm going to have to credit manufacturing overhead. Now if you look at what it's saying, close it out to cost goods sold. That means we would debit cost of goods sold. So we will debit cost of goods sold for three thousand dollars, and we will credit manufacturing overhead for three thousand dollars. And debiting cost of goods sold will increase cost of goods sold and then decrease income. If this were $3,000 over applied, remember that means that this would have been $15,000. This were $3,000 over applied. If that was the case, the journal entry would be debit overhead and credit cost of goods sold. A credit to cost of goods sold reduces cost of goods sold which then increases income, okay? The second way that we can do it is to allocate it among work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. And the way we do that is by looking at how much overhead was applied to WIP, how much overhead was applied to finished goods, and how much overhead was applied to cost of goods sold. So if you look back at those job cost sheets where we said job 101 had this much overhead, job 102 had this much overhead. So for example, right over here, here's how much overhead was in job 101 and job 101 was in cost goods sold. Here's how much overhead was in job 102 and job 102 was in finished goods. Here's how much overhead was in work in process, job 103. Okay, so I'm looking at these numbers and you can see if I add the four plus the three plus the two, I get the 9,000, which is the total amount of overhead applied. So what I can do is I can take a ratio. I can say work in process. We had, it had 2,000 of the total 9,000 overhead. And then I'm going to multiply that times the 3,000, which is the under applied or over applied overhead. In this case, it's under applied, which gives me, okay, a fraction there. Finished goods, 4,000 of the 9,000 times our 3,000. Okay, that's how much we'll go to finished goods. And then cost of goods sold, we can say it's our 3,000, and I, again, I'm getting these numbers from those job cost sheets that I just showed you, times the 3,000 gives me that 1,000. And so then my journal entry would be debit to WIP, debit to finished goods, debit to cost of goods sold, and then a credit to manufacturing overhead for that 3000 And of course, if this had been over applied overhead, it would be reversed. Okay, it would be reversed. Okay, the debit overhead for 3000 and then credit with credit finished goods and credit cost goods sold. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to pause the lecture video and I want you to do this problem and then we'll check it, okay? Thanks. Okay, welcome back. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how much overhead is applied. So we're going to take our 290,000 machine hours. This is my overhead rate times four. This is how much is applied, 1,160,000. Actual overhead is 1,210,000. Actual minus supplied is 50,000, which is the difference. And then we have to decide whether this 50,000 is under or over applied. You can see actual is greater than applied. That means it's under applied. 50,000 under applied is the correct answer. Okay, thank you so much.